Hi, welcome back to ACL Stands. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a handful of PCI sound cards. These are professional cards, professional sound cards that uh, you can make uh, music with. So all these cards work in Windows 7, and only a couple of them do work in Windows 10. These cards were still functional, even though they were made back in the early 2000s. The first card that we're going to start off with here is the M Audio File 2496 PCI. This is 2003. Up until a few months ago, I actually had this card, and uh, it's actually been a really good workhorse. Drivers on these early M Audio cards were just fantastic. So the 2496, you can see pretty nice little compact PCI layout, layout there. You've got the uh, RCA ins and outs. You've also got the port there for MIDI and SPDIF, so that's all on the uh, cable that comes with it. Uh, and there's a look at the front and the back there. So um, let's take a look at the specs on the 2496. So the 2496, uh, as its name suggests, 24 bit 96 kilohertz, win works in Windows 7, does work in Windows 10, although occasionally I had uh, blue screening. Uh, dynamic range, there's the input 100.4 and the output 104 dBA, so it puts it in a pretty average class. A lot of the audio interfaces, the entry level audio interfaces today are around that. Uh, the codec there uses the AKM4528, uses a 8427 digital transceiver, 2 in, 2 out, the RCA connectors, 9 pin connector, SPDIF, and a uh, little bit of a fun fact there as well, which I found was interesting and makes that makes sense because I, I imagine they sold a crap ton of these cards back in the day. So looking at the pros and cons here, or the highs and lows, the solid drivers and support, well, M Audio was renowned for their support back then. Um, the price, you could get those for under $200, so it was a great um, entry level card with a good quality DAX on it. Control panel, was easy and clear to understand lows and uh, this is where I found that the low frequencies weren't defined uh, this is where I think the card suffers the most so sonically this is purely going to be based off how it sounds not so much the bang for the buck because what you get here is a really good card for music production but um, sonically compared to my other higher end cards this one is on the low end of the spectrum I found that uh, you just doesn't have the same transparency and character that the uh, higher end cards have. So the next card is the M Audio Audio File 192. Now this is the card uh, I don't have on the bench here, but this is actually in my PC uh, at the time I'm recording this. It's been working in Windows 10 with the Windows 7 drivers. So um, let's take a look at the uh, M Audio Audio File 192 specs. So the Audio File 192, this is an upgrade for the 2496 card. It's a 24-bit 192 kilohertz. Windows 7 and Windows 10, still a little bit flaky in Windows 10, not as bad as the 2496 though I found, but the dynamic range here, 113 dBA and 109 dBA, some good figures there. Uh, the AKM 5385A and 4358 codex used, these are the same that are used on the ESI Julia card, so that's nice. Uh, two in, two out here, and it's got the main, two main, it's, sorry, it's got one main out pair and one monitor out pair. Yeah, so Spadiff on the back panel now, and you've got the MIDI and the one quarter inch uh, analog jacks now on the cable. Uh, then you've got the highs and lows here. This, this, again, the solid drivers and support. Control panel is good. This is significantly clearer with these DACs over the 2496. Um, there's nothing really I can say bad about this card. It's um, sonically, this one is definitely above average. Definitely worth picking this one up uh, over the 2496 in terms of uh, sound quality. So the next card I'm going to be looking at here is the ESI Julia, ESIAudio.com. And they brought out a lot of uh, cool things back in the day. I want to say a big thank you to flash that up on the screen who I got this from and uh, a really fantastic guy. Uh, he has a heap of these uh, 
PCI sound cards for sale so I grabbed uh, a couple of those yeah thanks very much for getting them shipped over here safe safely and this card is, was kind of highly sought after for its uh, time because it had the option of us uh, switch this around so you could rotate this top section so you could have like balanced or unbalanced yeah fantastic card let's check out the specs so the ESI Julia 24-bit 192 Windows 7, Windows 10, I mean this thing has still got support over on their website, so possibly even to Windows 11. Dynamic range here, 114, and uh, digital to analog 112, slightly over the M Audio 192. This could be because of just the better components and circuitry. The AKM 5385 and 4358, really good codecs, uh, as I mentioned, used also on the uh, Audio File 192. Uh, two in, two out, again they're swappable there so you can have the balanced or unbalanced connections. Uh, the 8 pin DIN connector for the MIDI and the SPDIF and also you've got the uh, digital out. So the highs and lows, again the solid drivers and support, it's still ongoing support for this. So really love ESI for that. The control panel is pretty simple, clear DAX. And I love the transparent character of this card. This is something that sets it apart from the Audio File 192. The only low point about this is the DIN connector. I'm not very happy with the DIN connections because they're just too prone to having issues. They just don't fit in there securely enough and my Julia card actually has an issue with the DIN connector. So I might have to get a DIN connector jack, pull mine off the card and solder in a new one. But uh, that's really the only low thing I can say about this card. So yeah, really good card, definitely recommend this one if you can find it for a good price. It uh, really does rival any of the external audio interfaces, at least the entry level ones uh, that are in the market today. Next card here is the Infrasonic Quartet. This one sounds fantastic. I had it in my PC for about a week just to test it out. There was support for this uh, pretty much all through up until Windows 7. Real shame that uh, the there's no Windows 10 drivers for this card because it really is a fantastic card and it sounds great, it has good dynamic range. So it comes with a HDMI connector here which mine didn't have which connects all the inputs and outputs in terms of the MIDI and some diff, anything up to Windows 7 and uh, this card is fantastic. So the Infrasonic Quartet, 24-bit 192, sadly no support for Windows 10, dynamic range 110, 113, the codec here is the AK4620, this was used in the RME Fireface, also the Echo Audio Fire. It's a four channel so you'll need quarter inch splitters here, so monos to single stereo, so each one of those quarter inch jacks on the card there is a stereo connection. HDMI connector for the MIDI and SPDIF also has a digital out. So this card is actually based off the audio track Maya 44 and you'll see the similarities as well in the ESI Maya 44 which was the successor to the design on this card. So pros and cons, sounds fantastic, it's got that really nice transparent character which I really like similar to the Julia, offers you four channels. So um, the only lows about this is it's just no support for it. Sonically, definitely it's high and I rate this pretty much almost similar to the Julia card. Also make sure that you pick up the cable that comes with the card as well. And here is another ESI card. This is the uh, Maya 44E. Isn't quite the same as good as the specs on the uh, Julia cards, but uh, this one is still pretty nice. So let's take a look at the specs of the Maya 44E. So the Maya 44E, 24-bit 96, this puts it in the same playing field as the M-Audio 2496, but this is a vastly superior card. It has a Windows 10 drivers, dynamic range, 102 on the AD and 108 on the DA. So I'm not sure what the codec is on this one, if anyone knows what that is, put it in the comments below. This is a 4-channel, so um, this is very similar in terms of design to the Quartet. Uh, the 8-pin DIN connector is the same and the uh, optical out there is the same as the Juliac. So the pros and cons, solid drivers, still support for this thing, control panels nice and clear, uh, excellent DAC, excellent circuitry, transparent character. I actually think this one sounds a little bit more sparkly than the Julia card and it's that DIN connector, I'm not a big fan of it. But uh, sonically I'm going to have to rate this one borderline on above average and high just because it's uh, sonically very pleasing. So the last card we're going to look at here is the EMU 1212M. Now this is mastering grade digital audio system. 
Everyone knows uh, Emu, Creative took over, works with uh, Windows 2000 and XP. This does, however, have drivers for Windows 7. The little bit of tinkering you can get this to work in Windows 10 ultimately has two cards and uh, then this is, has all the uh, inputs and outputs on it. In its time was probably worth a lot of money. It's the uh, 12 inputs, 12 outputs, uh, EDSP hardware, it has uh, 500 presets of effects, uh, it's MIDI and Firewire interface. So you've got the uh, 1010 PCI card, it's got the 202 IO daughter card and uh, really nice uh, there's the actual PCI card and yeah just have a look at that thing absolutely beautiful so let's take a look at the specs of the EMU 1212M the EMU 1212M 24-bit 192 this works on Windows 10 I can vouch for that I'm actually using it right now on this Windows 10 system thanks to a member of the KVR audio website who actually was able to figure out a workaround on how to get the drivers to work successfully on Windows 10 1212M the 16 16M I think it's also for the 1820, 1820M and the 0404, 121 and uh, DA123.6, so pretty crazy. The Kodak here is the AK5394 with the uh, 4398. This is a 12 channel, you've got uh, Firewire ADAT Spadiff on the main board and then on the daughter card you've got the two individual MIDI DIN connectors. So pros and cons. The highs are solid drivers, um, they're now working in Windows 10 with that fix there. The high quality DAC, which is also found in the DigiDesign Pro Tools HDIO module. Transparent character, nice low definition and uh, mids, highs all sound really sparkly. Uh, DIN connector, again, it's two slots needed, so you need a bit of extra space there, but um, sonically this thing is on another level. Sounds fantastic and uh, really is for doing some serious music production work. So some other mentions here, I'll just throw this in at the end. Obviously the list is bigger than this, but these are just some of the ones that I remember. Uh, the Echo, I particularly remember the Echo Mia and the Gina. And um, also there was some few others from M Audio too, I think the Delta series. Obviously there was different variations on the PCI and there was PCI E uh, of the uh, same sound card. Uh, there was TerraTech, they had a few cards, DigiGram, Pro Tools of course, and then I think on the higher end of the scale there was RME, they had the Hammerfall, there was a notable one, uh, also the Link Studio Technology, they had a number of cards, so the L22 was one I do remember seeing, and uh, that was pretty pricey. Uh, I think majority of those higher end cards were used in the broadcast industry, but um, that's pretty much the ones that I do remember. And uh, like I said, obviously there's more. So if you've got a PCI card that you're using in Windows 10, or even that you're still using in a Windows 7 machine, put it in the comments below because this would be a great place for anyone that's still interested in those old PCI cards to sort of come and have a look at and uh, see if those cards may be still relevant. So I guess the big question here is which card do I prefer out of the ones I've tested? And although the 1212M is the most expensive card here, dynamic range, and it's a very accurate card, you get a really accurate representation, mastering and uh, in mixing. If you're looking for that very precise sound, then, uh, then this is definitely the card that you'll want to uh, look at getting. Um, on the other side of that though is the Julia card and the Maya 44 were very pleasing to work with just over long periods of time everything sounds great through those cards and uh, I really it was a toss-up I've actually got the 1212M and the Maya 44 uh, in my PC at the moment because I just love the sound of both of them of course I would have the Julia in there but I've got to fix that uh, MIDI connector up so hopefully this video has triggered some nostalgic feelings. So there's a lot of history to these old PCI cards and it was these cards that were the cards that I was looking at in the early 2000s. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next project.